Follow us on Twitter. Insights. Yeah. Two eyes in the middle. I N S I I G H D S. All right, y'all. Rick Brown. What's up, my brother? What's up? Better is the poor that walketh in integrity than that he is perverse in his lips and is a fool. What's happening, Coach Clayton, on this, uh, how can I say, March Madness Eve? Yes! It's going yes, well. Yes. It's going Ooh, well. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, That's what's up. That's what's up. What's man, up, coach, man, I don't know about you. You don't went from being Confucius to giving us one unknown, little known fact. You didn't. You just. You just all across the map. Man, I am just. Man, I'm feeling so good today, man. It, it is. It is great to be. Breathing, it is great to be heard. What's up, family? <laughs> you miss, I was gone two weeks ago. You couldn't hear me last week. So <laughs> I'm just going to try to keep it low key today and not get too excited over my, um, over this is my favorite weekend of the year, coach. Absolutely. You know, you know, that goes without saying. Sports Diva, I see you. She's talking about what's up, y'all. Hey, Diva, what's happening? What is man, going but you on? know, for for basketball people, it's no other time than this. I mean, this is what it's all about. You know, hey, you save your days so you could see Thursday, which used to be the only time the HBCUs played. But then we got this early four or whatever we were doing that we play early, and you know, and you play on Tuesday and Wednesday, and to advance to play sixteen. So. You know that just you know I that just kind of loses some of the lure. Uh, happy anniversary, the Florida a and University men's basketball team. Twenty five years this year, we won the MEAC conference tournament and advanced in the first round to play Duke in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Man, that, congratulations to those guys for. A well job, a a a, a, a well preserved secret. Uh, we tried to get them to recognize those guys at the twentieth year anniversary. Um, they weren't mm. interested in doing that. Mm. I remember the Democrat reporter. I tried to get in touch with him, send him some information. He said, "I'll be at the game." Okay, so whatever that meant. But anybody else would get recognized for the outstanding achievement that that basketball team accomplished winning four games in five days and coming out of the playing game to be able to advance to the tournament and play what was then the number one ranked team that was so good and um, playing Duke. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sports Diva. We appreciate that. And I always remember that game was 21-17. Krzyzewski took a timeout. Raised his finger at them guys like that. We didn't get a shot for five minutes. Listen, folks. He didn't say they didn't <laughs> score for five minutes. Listen to what he said now. Say it again, Coach, for the ones in the back who might not have heard. We did not get in a basket attempt in five minutes. I mean, Elton Brand was on the block. Right off the bat, he turned, shot a little short jumper. Kevin George came from nowhere, caught it, threw it out. Bam. Here come the referee, goaltending. 
we like, uh oh, this this might be might be long night. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. But the representatives, and I tell I say this all the time, the guys, the fans, the alumni, the boosters were so happy to be there. And they sat directly in front of us. And I always, I always, I, I told my assistant coach, I said, man, them guys having a great time. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, look at them. They doing the wave, not around the stadium, but up and down, up and down. <laughs> I mean, they, they were so excited to be in there and to be playing Duke like we were. And we, we played that first game and, man, they ended up blowing us out. And like one of my point guards said, he said, man, they were beating Clemson and North Carolina and some of them other people like that too. So we don't feel that bad. But when we came back into the Charlotte arena, there was a another game after us. The fans stood up and gave Florida a and University men's basketball team a standing ovation. I mean, we came out with our heads down. But, man, they the way they received us, because we were – the story for the NCAA tournament to go from the number nine seeded conference team to win the tournament. Mm. And they had a radio show, John Thompson. They were killing us about it wasn't fair. They should take the number one team and rather than the team that won the tournament. And John Thompson, I always remember, he said, well, that's why it's set up like that for your tournament. He said, everybody who goes to the tournament has the opportunity to do what Florida a &M did, did, but they couldn't do it. <laughs> Big JT. <laughs> Big John told them that they, they couldn't do it. You know, so we we appreciate that. You know, the, you know we had a very, very successful run in women's basketball, but it paled in comparison to what we got being on the men's side and winning that tournament. You know, even to the fact that when you win, they for like eight to 10 years, they give you extra tickets to go to the NCAA tournament and go to the final four. And um, went, now I don't mean I got them, but you know, it took somebody else telling me to let me know we were getting them. But <laughs> you know, they had me there because they wanted to recognize us and honor us with some things. And um, every Every black coach at a power five institution knew who we were and all made way to come over and talk to us. You know, typically, them guys don't speak to us. You know, once you're on that side of the, the ledger, they, they don't acknowledge you. Mm. You know, but the attention we got, I have a picture with me, James Worthy, uh, John Havlicek, and I'm trying to think who else was in that picture. I had a good friend of mine see that picture and they like, who is the little guy that's standing here with the with the legends? And I said, man, that's me. They said, what? They said, look like you about six one standing next to them guys. No. But it, it, it was a real special time. So, you know, we, we've always been in love with this time of the year, and we were glad that we were able to do something and bring the school some much needed moolah. You know, but it, it's a it's an experience that you don't really realize all of what you're going through till it's over because you it's just so much stuff happening, Rick. It's just so much stuff happening. Right. No. Right. Right. But we're, ladies we're and gentlemen, we I'm everything. You're right. Wow. <clears throat> you know, um, we're gonna do something. We we each now you know, I don't think our listening audience knows how much time you, we put in trying to do some presentations to you about the NCAA tournament and the regions and things like that. So we're, we're going to start with, um, you want to start with the men or the women? Let's do a choice. I, I never Let's mind. I, 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 I've been a mood on here. Let me go. The Portland bracket of the NCAA women's basketball tournament should be known as the big payback bracket. Last year, Ohio state beat UConn who then lost to Virginia Tech. And you know, all three are in this year's bracket. But so is USC, who has a number one seed for the first time since 1986. In fact, the last time USC was 
number one in the bracket, the only Miller we knew of was Cheryl Miller. They have another budding star, however, in freshman Juju Watkins, who was second in the nation in scoring and is the real deal. But are the Trojans ready for prime time? We know one team who generally is ready, the Yukon Huskies. What's scary for teams should be Paige Buckers is starting to round into that form that made her the 2021 Player of the Year. They open with number 14 Jackson State, the runaway SWAC winner. If UConn can get by JSU and an experienced and second seed Ohio State squad in the round of 16, and if USC can get by the gauntlet of Kansas and six foot six Tiana Jackson, and then ACC regular season champion Virginia Tech. An Elite Eight matchup between the Huskies and the Trojans would be an exciting match to see who gets to the Final Four. Other players in this bracket to watch. Syracuse's Daisha Fair is fifth on the NCAA all-time scoring list and has a possibility to slide into third place if the Orange can make a good run. Virginia Tech's Georgia Amore is the first person in program's history to record a triple-double. The team to watch out for? Marshall. Yeah, they're in the Sun Belt, and they may be seated 13th, but they don't have anything to lose when they take on Virginia Tech. It's the team's first NCAA tournament since 1997. They are playing with house money. This should be a fun bracket to see who will be on the road to Cleveland. Man, that's a that, that's a good job there, Rick. Oh, Lamar Jones. No, not my guy from Barbecue Jank. Oh, <laughs> the best barbecue y'all ever want to taste. Right over there at the Barbecue Jank. He said, dopeness, keep doing your thing, fellas. Man, I'm telling you that. Thank you. That's some barbecue sauce you don't need to do nothing with. You don't need to doctor it. You don't need to do nothing. Boy, you need to go online and get y'all something. That's that's Insights official barbecue sauce. Y'all know I can tell you about some barbecue. But that right there, that ain't nothing to play with. Just, just, right. just telling you. I'm just telling you. <laughs> just telling you. Y'all need to try some. But go ahead, Rick. Uh. A few of those, uh, Amare uh, Moore and, uh, I mean, Georgia Amore and Deja Fair, named third team All-Americans today. Paige Buckers, of course, was a first team All-American. So you have those All-Americans in this region. And it should be fun. Uh, Juju Watkins, All-American as well as a freshman. Uh, this should be a fun region to watch. A lot of ind great individual players, uh, as well as some great teams. So, I, I can't, I'm looking forward to this region just to see how it all plays out. Well, a couple of things you said. Now, Paige at UConn, you know that she's a little special. She was in that recruiting class where she was in one of the top five in the country in that class with Caitlin and Angel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then she had uh, that knee surgery, man, two years in a row and yeah. uh, kind of set her back. But, man, she's been rolling pretty good. And yeah. for those who haven't seen USC, you need to see them. Um, that Juju, I mean, she it's almost shades of Cheryl Miller in terms of the local star who did well mm -hmm. and stayed mm -hmm. home. And other people stayed home with her to play with her. Man, was well, she averaged right at 30 points a game. That, come on now. That ain't no joke. No. 30 points a game as a freshman? Get out of here. Get out of here. So you mm -hmm. you right. That that region right there is, man, that's, that's going to be a little special. Yeah. No doubt about it, Rick. No doubt about it. Good job there. That was a Portland three or Portland four? That was three. Okay. 
That was three, okay? This is Insights Reporter, Rosa, on special assignment. Iowa has the first and second rounds on campus. Even from home. The championship road is imposing. A potential Sweet 16 matchup with K-State is a team that already has AW over Iowa. Iowa could have Angel Reese and LSU in their path. UCLA, or LSU, pick your poison. Iowa. Must see, TV. This is Insights reporter, Rosa, on special assignment. Iowa has the first and second rounds on campus. Even from home. The championship road is imposing. Women, Albany 2 region. Man, some call it the region of death with Caitlin Clark and how difficult it seems to be for Iowa to be able to get there this year in the region that they're in. But a couple of things that are really kind of interesting in this bracket. One of them is LSU. LSU. We all know about Angel Reese and their ability to get to where they're trying to go. But one of the things that has to happen is they're going to have to be able to play and contest with some teams that really are pretty good on the inside, and they're projecting to be able to give them some problems on the inside. LSU and Louisville in the semi in the uh, second game of the tournament should be an interesting. So should UCLA, the number two seed. Boy, that UCLA, now they have some size on the inside. And they won their first 14 games of the season. Then lost, they were lost five of 10. They were five and five. But they play so well on the inside, they're picked to be able to, as a candidate, to perhaps get to the finals in this region. And it's LSU and UCLA. They, that's where the big girl problem will come in for Angel Reese, supposedly. Then Iowa will either get LSU or UCLA if they make it that far. And that in itself should be interesting. Now, it's kind of interesting that LSU and Louisville have the ability to play each other in the second round. One of the better players that went through the transfer portal Haley Van Lith left Louisville for what she thought was a better opportunity to perhaps get to the national title. They may play each other. She's at LSU. She's really a two guard, can shoot the ball, but she's been playing the point for them. It'll be interesting to see how she left one school to go to another school and one of them has to win and one of them has to lose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I- I'm gonna come right back to it. There, I'm come right back to it. <laughs> and we don't have the sound on it, Ernest. I was trying, mm-hmm. Lamar. I was trying to show you we mm-hmm. we represent. Mm-hmm. But you were gonna say something about that uh, region. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk, people. When, when, when that bracket was announced, they were like, wait a minute. How can the two teams that played in the championship play each other beforehand? That's not right. They're talking about mm-hmm. Iowa and LSU. And they were trying to explain it. They were like, you know, you know, teams in the same conference can play each other. And it all wrapped up. And, and this is just how it worked out. And had a lot of women upset because of that. They they wanted to see them later, either in the final four or another championship game. But you're right. Hey, it's not that that's a tough bracket. It's a and tough bracket. either one of them might get knocked off early. So right. you, you, can't, you can't just say like it back in the day when when you say okay. Yeah, UConn, yeah, you can put them in the final four. Tennessee, you can put them in the final four. Nah, not, not in that bracket. Nope. No, no, no. Nope, and they say Iowa has the toughest road, you know, for a number one seed. I, I don't, but they, 
it is what it is. I mean, they didn't exactly sweep through the season this year. They they had a few difficulties, you know, mm -hmm. had a few L's on it. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can even get to the final four. You know, there's some people that'll probably sell their tickets if if they don't get there. But on the other hand, it's so many good programs in any at USC and UCLA emergence this year has really uh, galvanized the West Coast. Uh, you usually don't hear about the West Coast players, but the, the West Coast teams have kept the kids on the West Coast on the West Coast, and you got USC and UCLA. You know that that had to be some type of game they they had during the regular season, you know, for them to be able to go at it like they did. I mean, it's just, woo woo, it's just something a little special. We keep talking about the women's basketball bracket is the bracket, and we still say a lot of it has to do with the fact that their stars stay four and five years, so mm -hmm. people know who's on that team as opposed to the one and done. Mm -hmm. yeah. as, as opposed to the one in Dunst. The Portland Four bracket at the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is the who's who bracket. Some big time women's teams that, while not top seeds, are here and can still cause havoc. Former national champions Tennessee, Stanford, and Maryland are all in this bracket. Also, Two squads close to us, Norfolk State, the MIAC winner, and Florida State from the great city of Tallahassee. FSU takes on Alabama to start the tournament before a potential second round meeting with top seed Texas. Norfolk State takes on Stanford with the winner perhaps taking on Maryland if they can get by number seven, Iowa State. A fun round of 16 game can be looming for Stanford and Tennessee, which would simply be sweet. That could set up a meeting in the Elite Eight with Texas for a trip to Cleveland and the Final Four on the line. Speaking of the Longhorns, we know Texas is the number one seed in this bracket. Not many expected this, especially after Rory Harmon went down with an ACL injury early in the season. But freshman Madison Booker took up the slack, and with an experienced squad behind her, they went 30 and 4 and will be a tough out in this region. Other players to watch Tennessee's Rakia Jackson averages 19 4, 8 rebounds, and 2.4 assists, and is a threat anytime she's on the court. NC State's Isaiah James. Averages 15.8 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 2.8 assists to lead the Wolfpack. For an upset watch, check out Gonzaga. They're a senior-lated team with three fifth-year seniors, which could prove valuable in crunch time. Gonzaga is one of those institutions that has an outstanding men's program and women's program, just like UConn. It, it's, it's not a lot of them who men and women teams are rolling and consistently rolling like what they're doing. Yep. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Um, this bracket is strange to me <clears throat> because everyone thinks Texas is going to run away with it, and, and they may. But you still have Stanford in there, you know, and, and Stanford right. and, and with their coach, you know, when, when when two teams are relatively equal, I usually give the advantage to the coaching staff if they have more experience, just because they've been there, they've done that. Uh, now, don't get me, and, and Warren Sapp always used to say, it's not about X's and O's, it's about Billy's and Joe's or Jimmy's and Joe's. And for the most part in football, that's correct. But you coaches, y'all can devise some some things. <laughs> and if you've been there before, you know how to shut things down. And and, and so 
that's why I don't think it's going to be an easier road for Texas, as, as everyone says, unless Stanford gets knocked out early. Well, one of the things I like, one thing about Stanford is they're big. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're, they're huge. But I like teams that have jump shooters, especially if they have more than one. Because they can change it, the complexion of the game, real quick. And now the thing is, I've seen it just like Howard last night. They they fell down 12 in the first quarter. And it was a long road to come back. You know, they did come back. But once you kind of dig yourself that kind of hole, when you're missing those shots like Howard was, it's kind of hard to get yourself back into it. And so you're playing above yourself to catch up and you exert a lot of energy to catch up and now if you're home sometimes that crowd will boost you and help you get over the hump but if you're not you kind of run out of gas a little bit it's like you know it, it's, it's like jeremiah I, I i had explained to him running track i said the object is to is to catch people not to be in the back chilling so He's coming around 220. He's around there socializing. So Popeye yells at him, Jeremiah, get him. So Jeremiah took off like a bat out of you know where. And he was coming down the lane. Everybody's like, wow, he's running everybody down. He caught the guy who was leading, stopped, walked off the track. His mother was at the finish line trying to tell him to finish. His grandmother then looked at me. I said, well, I didn't explain it well enough. I told him to catch him. <laughs> he caught him. <laughs> He then he left. He was done. <laughs> he, he, my boy was done. So I was like, yeah, I got to explain that a little bit better to him, the, the art of winning and the art of losing. It wasn't was much I could say then, Rick. <clears throat> it wasn't much I could say then, so that, that was it. This is Matilda with Insights, fresh off covering the CI. Double A with Claflin. The Gamecocks have been playing with a chip on their shoulder all season, as they look to avenge last season's semifinal loss to Caitlin Clark and Iowa. No one thought they could reload this effectively after losing three first round picks in the 2023 WNBA draft. They added prolific scorer, Oregon transfer Tahina Pow Pow, and tightened up their defensive concepts. Could an upset derail South Carolina be for a possible second seeded Notre Dame? Coach Don Staley is preaching to the Lady Gamecocks, take it one step at a time. In the women's Albany One region, it's all about South Carolina and Don Staley's charges. They were not expected to do as well as they did this year because they lost five starters from last year, three of them who were first-round WNBA draft picks. Their team is the number one seed in their region, and they also had the benefit of a fairly easy bracket, especially when you consider how good they are. They're led by Camila Cardosa, 6'5", 14 points, 9.5 rebounds, who won't play in the first half of the team's first-round matchup because of the fight that we all know about against at LSU. Now, one of the things about them, they have a girl who could shoot the ball, a transfer pow-pow, Oh, she can fill that thing up. She's a transfer student and plays exceptionally well. She in a, she by herself is worth the price of admission because of the different things she can do. Now, one thing about this region, that is the premier game, and people are waiting until they get to Notre Dame, which has the capabilities to knock them off. Will they? Eh, I don't know. Staying with our flavor of the home home teams, we have a situation where we got Florida, Gulf Coast, girls team that's advancing and playing. They're playing against Oklahoma. And in that contest, you have a number five seed and a number 12 seed. Florida Gulf Coast advanced to the second round last year. Um, and they go in into the tournament this weekend on a 21-game winning streak so you can't really overlook them they also had the ability to shoot the ball Amani Jefferson at 16.3 points a game and Uji Uzundawa at 13 and a half 
it'll be a game worth watching. Oklahoma's a favorite, but you can't underestimate Florida Gulf Coast. It's the girls' time this year. Then at the 7 and 10, you got Ole Miss and, Mar- and Marquette. Uh, Ma- Ole Miss is actually picked to be the favorite over Marquette in this game. What is the, f- the, f- the local interest? The assistant coaches from Tallahassee, and that's Chris Ayers. Most of you connected with basketball a little bit know about Chris. He's one of the lead assistants with that program and talked a lot about how they quickly they turned it around at Mississippi by hitting that transfer portal. Had to pull from Mississippi. Like to see them advance. They got Notre Dame if they get there in the second round. Again, that's Albany. One region. Mm, 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 mm. Chris was on Mick and Rick two years ago. Yes, yes, I remember. I remember that show. Great coach. I mean, he was talking about the transfer portal before it really blew into what it is today. Mm -hmm. I I, I remember that conversation very well. That was a good show. (laughs) That was a good show. And Chris is is a good guy. I mean, he, he really is a good guy. We wish him well over at Mississippi, and he continues to put in work over there. His chance might come. Now, you mentioned something earlier about Jackson State, who was, who have dominated in the sweat. And who do they end up with? They don't get the number one seed. They're 15, but they get UConn. And that's, you know, <laughs> when, when HBCU goes somewhere and plays, everybody at an HBCU past, current, future, pull for them because a win helps everybody in their program. If it's Bethune-Cookman and they win, then we pull for them to win. You know, because a win speaks for all of us. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're carrying that torch. You know, right. they're, they're carrying that torch. You know. <laughs> but uh, Florida Gulf Coast yeah. comes in with a 21-game winning streak. Mm. You know, I think that's impressive. That's a game to watch, Coach, and, and you're right. I mean, and they seem like a team that likes to go up and down. It, it, mm-hmm. it, 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 it can shoot the ball. And, hey, let, let Oklahoma be, ha- be half-stepping. <laughs> the right. water girls go do something. <laughs> right. I'm, ex- I'm excited about this tournament, Coach. I really am. But, mm-hmm. you know, you mentioned, I mean, the, the 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 leader, South Carolina, and they're number one overall, still undefeated. They had one girl on the All American team, one, mm-hmm. <laughs> Cardoso, and, and, and that just tells you how strong they are. I mean, it's not just about one person. Don has a team there. After losing three people um, to the WNBA last year, they're going to be something. Yeah. I hear you, Sports Diva. <laughs> Norfolk beat UConn, and they liable to shut down the state. Or, 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 or shoot, or, or, or Gino will will get someone to try to destroy the state. One or the other, but <laughs> one or the other will happen. And <laughs> let's go. But it's just a matter of time. Of time. It's just, it's, it's just a matter of time. That's that's what it is. But like we said, Rick, this is this is the time of the year we love. It's just there's gonna be some Cinderella teams. It's gonna be some upsets. Was it last year that, that no number ones even made it to the final four on the men's side of the bracket? That's right. And the, the bad thing about it is you don't know who those teams are because you don't see them. I mean, when you yeah. see them, there's no recognizable names on the rosters but we got the men coming up right now continuing the madness let's check out the west known as the big boy region any of the top five teams in this region can make a deep run in this tournament and that doesn't even include former ncaa champion michigan state which is a number nine seed north carolina arizona baylor alabama and St. Mary's, who finally got past Gonzaga to win the WCC tournament. 
You know, it's funny how both St. Mary's and Gonzaga are both five seeds of different regions. But I, dig but I digress. These teams will make it tough with anyone they play. Now, for the teams to beat, you got to go with the top two seeds. Top seed at North Carolina may be that team. They can play inside with Armando Baycott or let ACC Player of the Year R.J. Davis go to work. They missed last year's tournament, but plan to make up for it this year. Arizona took a team from that Tar Heels squad, transfer Caleb Love, teamed him with a seven-footer, and now they may have the best inside-out combo in the tournament. Love was Pac-12 Player of the Year, while Umar Balo was all Pac-12. With strong guard play, Arizona is no joke. Other players to watch in this tournament, which is not just top heavy, Arizona's guard, Pale Larson, just is the calming force for the Wildcats when things go crazy. And Dayton's Deron Holmes, the A-10 co-player of the year, is a stat sheet filler. The junior forward averaged 20.4 points, 8.4 rebounds, 2.6 assists, and 2.1 blocks. Now for the game to watch. No, not a 12-5 this time. How about number four, Alabama, versus number 13, Charleston? If you like points, strap in, because this promises to be a high-scoring affair. Alabama led the nation in scoring at more than 90 points a clip. Now, they also gave up more than 81 points a game. Charleston scores 80 easily every night and is coming into this on a 12-game win streak. This is going to be a game. In the end, though, as fun as those games will be, it's to come down to North Carolina and Arizona with a trip to the Final Four on the line. We got another Alabama kid. And we got another local kid at Alabama, 6'8", Chris Parker. KP, son, and Shelly Boston, who played for the Rattlerettes. Their son, he's 6'8". Uh, should be a, he's a freshman this year. Hadn't played much, but his, his time is coming. But he, uh, uh, the 850, rep the 850, is being recognized. So and just need to genes. give a shout out to him. Yeah, and he's got good genes. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. And he's just a freshman. Mm, mm, mm. He, he's yeah. he's just a freshman. So that was your Portland two or four. No, that, that was, was what the, was that? Yeah. That was the, <laughs> that I'm was still the, on the <laughs> That was the West. I think. <laughs> Let <Jeez>. me stop. <laughs> yeah, that was the West version. That was a big boy dude. In the East region. UConn gets the number one overall, overall seed, as expected, and they stay near home in Brooklyn. The Huskies could face Florida Atlantic, a Final Four team last year that won its way to Houston with two victories in New York last year. Illinois and Iowa State are the number two and three seeds, and both could be threats. The two contrasting teams there with the uh, Illini, one of the top scoring offenses, and the Cyclones having an outstanding defense. Auburn is another threat after rolling through the SEC tournament in San Diego State reached the title game last year. Whichever team makes it out of the regional will have earned it. Now let's just take a quick look at a couple of the games that are being played. One of them, most people, the UConn game and Stetson game, they expect it to be pretty much a blowout. Now, much of UConn's uh, core is back from last year. And they can pretty much do everything. Five-star freshman Stephon Castle averaging right at 11 is Connecticut's fifth and final starter. They had uh, 21 wins against quad one and quad two teams. They're undoubtedly the number one seed overall. But we always want to make sure we favor or give some more information on the home team, and that would be the Florida school, Stetson, out of D-Land, having their first 
NCAA tournament appearance in program history. Their success is largely dependent on junior guard Jalen Blackman, almost 22 points a game. He hit 43 in the conference tournament. He's an almost 40% three-point shooter on 280 attempts, which means he's putting that ball up. He's in the top 10 in the nation in scoring, so he's a guy you might want to watch. Senior guard Alex Oglesby, he hit 40% from long range. And they have a 6'11 junior, Albon Gattaresti, 12 points, 8 rebounds, active in the middle. Now, one thing they don't do, they don't play D at all. They rank 347 in defense, in defense efficiency. So you don't play no defense against UConn, you in trouble. But if you watch that one, you might be a little curious to see how Blackman does. If he, if Jalen is hot a little bit, they could pose a first half threat in that contest. We got an, another Florida school. We got Florida Atlantic number eight and against Northwestern number nine. Florida Atlantic went really far last year, uh, but they ended up not going as far yet. Well, we don't really know, but again, a lot of these teams have real good perimeter shooters. The uh, Co-AAC Player of the Year, Janelle Davis, averaged 18.6 rebounds, three assists, shot 43% from three-point range. They also have a 7-1 junior, Vladislav Golden, at 16-7. And, and they had an inside-outside game that might be a threat. They go against the number nine seed, Northwestern. And, you know, Northwestern was able to get there. But the team we're pulling for is always the home team. So in this one, we're hopeful that the Florida Atlantic team goes well. And just kind of letting you know, there's a couple people you might want to watch in that one. Now, locally, we got a game with Auburn, number four seed, and UCLA, number 13. A lot of people... In the South, kind of pull for Auburn, and they run everything runs through 6'10, uh, Johnny Brome, 16 points, nine uh, rebounds. He has 13 double doubles. Forward, Jalen Williams at 12 in the game, and Chad Baker Mazara at 11. One of the reasons that we kind of follow Auburn, even though they have an outstanding coach, is the presence of Florida High Trey Donaldson who won a state championship for Coach uh, Heisman Trophy winner, former Heisman Trophy winner, Charlie Ward. We have to pick for the home team or at least watch him for Trey. Trey is a guy, a sophomore guard, who some say he's the most improved player from freshman to sophomore. We want to watch Trey. That's number three. Tallahassee kid that's getting some burn at Auburn. Number three, Trey Donaldson from Florida High. For a limited time only, the first 500 downloads of the Insights app will get free premium content for life. Watch the Mick and Rick Show, Black History Moments, Remembering the Legends, Insights Magazine, Faith TV, along with the Game of the Week series. See Insights creative content with skits from the Church Sisters, students in generations and more. The Insights app is on your Android and iPhone and is now being downloaded in countries worldwide. This is Mickey Clayton, the coach from Inside Sports. Boy, y'all know I love me some barbecue. I found the bestest barbecue sauce. It's online at BBQ Jank, BBQ, J-A-N-K, the Jank. Boy, I'm messing around with that stuff. I no longer have to mess around trying to make my own. I'll put that in a pot, put it on my meat. I'll claim it, but it's from the Jank. The official barbecue sauce of Inside Sports. You better order some for your next tailgate early. I'll claim it. <laughs> I'll claim it. <laughs> I'll claim it, Lamar. I told you we had you, man. We, we, we'll claim it. <laughs> Tell me about well, that we, region, Coach. Some local plays. Man, some we got to talk about my boy is Trey. Trey made a difference. Uh, he's, a, he's a winner. He's a dog. We, we, I kind of argue about that team. And, and his influence on that state championship, the fact that, you know, Trey just, 
He follows what the coach tells him. And then once he gets on the floor, he does whatever he has to do to win. He'll rebound. He'll steal. He'll dunk on you. He's going to body up on you, play defense. Uh, one of the coaches in the SEC said the, uh, the winning combination needs to go to the trainer. He said whoever put that kid on a physical fitness program and worked him out in that weight room is like night and day. So Coach Charlie Ward told us that, Coach, yeah, he's good enough that he could play for a living. But he was even a more highly recruited cornerback. He played quarterback and corner. He was being recruited big time in football. So we just try, I mean, that's something that we do with insights. We're able to kind of follow these high school kids. And as they continue on, one of the things that we try to do is follow them as well as we can and let you know how they're doing. You know, if they're doing something negative, they get arrested. It's an, it's number one story on the paper. But these kids that we're telling you about, bringing to you, that they're, they're doing something positive with their career and their life and they're advancing and they're doing well. They're doing well. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. My favorite weekend of the year has arrived. It's NCAA tournament time. Let's jump right into it by checking out the men's Midwest region. Or what I'm calling it, the at-large region. You see, the top 10 teams in this region all made the tournament with at-large bids. In fact, the highest seeded champion is Pac-12 champ, Oregon, and they're seeded 11th. Now, there are some names in this region, but honestly, it looks like a smooth run for the top seeded Purdue Boilermakers. Number four, Kansas won't have his leading score here. And number five, Gonzaga, well, they're not the Zags we've been used to seeing in years past. Number two, Tennessee is interesting, but they will be looking for their first appearance in the Elite Eight since 2010. So we'll see how this goes. The games to watch in this region, mark that tw number 12 McNeese State versus number five Gonzaga down. Every tournament, a 12 gets the best of the five seed. Usually because the 12 seed is normally a mid-major that has a bunch of older players. Gonzaga isn't the normal number five seed, however, so that should make it a very interesting contest. Another game to keep an eye on, number four, Kansas, versus number 13, Sanford. The Southern Conference champion Sanford Bulldogs are making their first appearance in the tournament since 2000. They shoot well and defend even better. But remember, even a wounded Jayhawk team is dangerous, but it's not a lock. Again, this is about Purdue. The Boilermakers became the second number one team in history to lose a, to a 16 seed last year. That first team that lost to a 16 seed, the Virginia Cavaliers, well, they won the NCAA championship the next year. Purdue is hoping to follow a similar outcome led by center Zach Eady. The team to watch in this bracket, the Creighton Jays from the Big East. They'll have no big name players, but man, can this team shoot. Add some good defense, and this is the type of team that can make a deep run in the tournament. That's it for this region. Let the madness begin. Yeah, that injury in Kansas, you, you tend to think that's not going to affect them much, huh? Oh, no, it's going to affect them. It's going to affect okay. them big time. And and their top two players were hurt for the um, the conference Champions tournament. Conference tournament. They're, yeah. hoping, they're hoping the, 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 the second one can get back, but... Yeah, this could be uh, one and done for the, the the Jayhawks. Well, you had a you made a a, a really good comment about the mid majors in that fifteen spot with older players, mm -hmm. and that that's 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 really an astute observation. True, I agree with because a lot of those guys stay and play, and they get to be fifth year seniors now. 
you know, we've talked on the show sometime with COVID, sometimes it's six and seven years. And I, Howard had a guy that was eight years. I mean, I said, that he about to draw retirement, isn't he? he I mean, can can he and in, in get Social Security or something? So <laughs> that's, so, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, wow, what what's really going on? You know. <laughs> but it makes a difference. It, it does make oh, a difference, coach, and, and you know it. I mean, yeah. experience and, and, and older, their bodies are more. <laughs> they got that man body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they've been through it most of the time, so. <laughs> yeah. They give them, yeah, they can give a, they, that's why the mid-majors often give the top teams blues in the early rounds. And if they're not careful, they get knocked off. If they're not careful, they get knocked off. True point. Hey, I, I have a comment uh, and something we need to mention. Long Beach State. Mm. Long Beach State lost its last five regular season games. They fell to 10 and 10 in the Big West. And the school said they had enough. They fired their coach, Dan Monson, and they let him finish out the season behind their beleaguered and soon-to-be former coach. They rallied behind their coach in a conference tournament, beating two of the top three seeds, including San Diego State, in the final. They earned an unlikely NCAA <laughs> tournament bid. Fifth-year point guard Marcus Tashonis, averaging 18 points a game, who played at Washington and VCU, leads five players in double figures. And junior Jaden Jones shoots 38% from three-point range. They push the pace to get extra possessions. They're in a bracket where they're not really picked to do well, but I don't know that I would bet against them. Every Do you, you bet with your heart? Or with your mind. And everybody likes an underdog. As we told our team when we went to the MEAC, again, our 25th year anniversary, Florida AM University, winning the MEAC conference tournament, going to the NCAA this year. We told them in the conference tournament, everybody has, every tournament has a Cinderella team. Why not us? Four games, five days, as as it's well scripted. Nine players called the Noble Nine, seven on scholarship, two kids that we picked up by having open tryouts so that we could try to get enough guys to practice. The tenth man, our trainer, T Ray, the <laughs> left handed, come out there and scrimmage with the guys so we could have 10 guys to play. Started the season 0 and 9. End up media darlings and at the NCAA tournament. So I'm a, I, I, I'm pulling for Long Beach State and Dan Monsoon and hope that he could pull it together and continue to ride this as long as he can. And it will be some more job opportunities that are definitely coming his way. So he is fired. So they're going to fire him for real, even though, even though no, they fired him. Attorney. They oh, fired him. Yeah, they oh, fired him. They let him finish out the season. Uh, they told him they weren't bringing him back at the end of the season. But the season isn't over, right? Because they won the I'm tournament, sorry. right? Right. He's still coaching the team, Rick. Right, right, right. That's right. why I'm saying that's why I'm saying it would be nice for him to keep on riding this out as long as he can. His team came together and played for him. So you don't think they can rescind it? They they will rescind it, rather. <clears throat> With Men South region, it has six teams with NCAA championship banners hanging in their home arenas and a couple with recent Final Four visits. You got Marquette, Wisconsin, Kentucky, Duke, and Florida in a region that's full of historic teams that have made that trip. The games we're looking at always stand in tradition with the local team, that would be Florida from Gainesville. In this area, most people don't really like the Gators. We don't have a problem with them. Cousin, upper class guard, Walter Clayton. I'm just playing, not really cousin, unless he plays well. But 18 points and another guard at 15.6, Zion Pullen. 
Clayton shooting 36% on 240 shot attempts. It could be related to the way he pulls that trigger like that because that's what I would be doing. They rank sixth in offensive rebounding in the nation, and they have a 6'11 freshman, but he's going to have to pick it up inside for Florida to be able to make too much of a run. Now, the Kentucky-Oakland game. Okay, Kentucky, always a team I liked. I mean, they, I, it was just something about Kentucky, and it, it has hurt them with their constant roster turnover, which kind of kills them. That ain't Kentucky, they have that's a, Duke. Have that nice, um, leave, all the kids leaving like they leave, the one and dones, which we say is one of the reasons that men's basketball is losing popularity because people don't really know the players. They have a, a Reed Shepard, a freshman who's averaging 13 points a game. He leads the nation at 52% from shooting three. Leading scorer Antonio Reeves averaged 20 points a game. They have five players that average double figures, and that doesn't, doesn't even include five-star freshman Justin Edwards and 7-1 Aaron Broadshell. Oakland. Doesn't have much of a chance in this game, but they have the longest tenured coach in Division One, and he's been there 40 seasons. Greg Camp it has had Oakland in there for the fourth time. They shoot the ball, score a lot, but they're going to have to score a whole lot to be able to keep up with Kentucky in this contest. So those are the local teams, uh, the people that we kind of have an interest in, be Kentucky, and again, Florida. You got Houston. Most people are already penciling them in. I don't know if they could be penciled in, but they might be on the easiest path to get to the Final Four. Walter Clay Jr. from Bartow, Florida. Polk County, stand up. Be proud of your guy. Ah, that's the picture we're talking about. James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and little old me. <laughs> ah, it's going to be an interesting week, y'all, with all the basketball that's going on. Y'all know how we feel about it, excited about it. It doesn't get much better than this, at least for basketball fans. The legendary Magic Irvin Johnson said, Cheryl Miller was truly one of the greatest women's college basketball players to ever play the game. From dunking and scoring 105 points in a single high school game to becoming a three-time Naismith Player of the Year and two-time NCAA champ, there wasn't much she couldn't do. It speaks volumes that she is in the Naismith Hall of Fame, Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, and now California Hall of Fame without playing a single game as a professional. Cheryl is a pioneer of women's basketball and women's history. Her playing career was cut short, but her impact lives on and has contributed to the ongoing advancement of women's basketball. Magic continued. He said, thank you for daring to be different and continuing to shine your light through coaching, broadcasting, and always advocating the growth of the game. Cheryl was born January 3rd, 1964. Former American basketball player. She was formerly a sideline reporter for NBA games on TNT Sports. Works for NBA TV as a reporter and analyst, having worked previously as a sportscaster for almost everybody, ABC Sports, TBS Sports, and ESPN. She was also the head coach and general manager of the WNBA Phoenix Mercury. Cheryl played at Riverside Polytech High Schools, 1978 to 82, where she was a four-time letter winner and led her team to 132 wins 
and only four losses. She was awarded the Dial Award for the National High School Scholar Athlete of the Year in 1981. She was the first player, male or female, to be named an All-American by Parade Magazine four times. Oh. Cheryl averaged 32.8 points and 15 rebounds a game. She was named Street and Smith's National High School Player of the Year in both 1981 and 1982. Her senior year, she scored 105 points in a game against Norta Vista High School. She set California state records in points scored in a single game. I'm in a single season, 1,156, and points scored in a high school career, 3,405. She continued on at University of Southern Cal, staying at home at six foot two. She played the four position. She was teammates with Cynthia Cooper, two-time WNBA MVP, Pam McGee, 1984 Olympian and All-American, and Paula McGee. That was one of the better women's basketball teams that I had ever seen. They were dominant. Cheryl continues to push and promote women's basketball. Played for the U.S. national team in the 1983 World Championships. She, in 1984, sent his national team to the competition in Taiwan for pre-Olympics. The team easily beat everybody they played. She led the U.S. team to a gold medal in the 84 Olympics game and was a part of the 1983 gold medal winning team at Pan American Games in Venezuela. Cheryl continued to do so many things in the sport of basketball. And for that, she is an insights legend. First one to dunk in a game. That USC team was loaded, and they're hoping that they have the same thing with your girl, Juju, that they keep the kids at home to be a part of what she's trying to build. You know, I don't know much about the West Coast players that much, but you, we all heard about Cheryl Miller. <laughs> and that USC squad, good gosh almighty. And, and the McGee mm -hmm. twins and mm, what a dominant squad. Dominant. they did for women's basketball, they helped elevate it. Yeah, absolutely they did. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we're going to talk about what's going on in the tournament. Might not donate, uh, give the whole show about basketball. But if y'all enjoy this, let us know. Tell us. Give us some feedback on it. Yay, nay. If you enjoyed the, the information that Mick and Rick passed on to you about these brackets and about these teams, and Rick with your, your boy coach, I I don't think – I think once they the university make a decision, I, I cannot see them going back and saying, I bet we made a mistake. I can't see it, but I've, stranger things have happened. I, ju I just can't see that happen. You know, I, I can't see that happen. What it may do is, a, in their mind, they're probably thinking, you know what? If the team goes further and further like this, it'll make it easier for somebody else to want to come in and take this team because they'll know they have some talent. And da 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 da. -da. But once they've made a decision, they, you know, they they're gonna try to promote it and be the good guys to let them now be the good guys and let them ride it out as far as you can. And that's why they usually fire people on the spot. Especially football learned that lesson a long time ago. Don't let the don't let your coach win a, a game against your rival and then go to the bowl and win. Mm -mm. Get rid right. of them now. Right. Right. <clears throat> right. And they usually wait if they're gonna do that till the end of the season. It just I mean I don't know, I guess they somebody thought that they were gonna get a a, a, a quick start on next year with whatever, you know. Whatever, a sports di sports diva say, keep up the basketball updates. We 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 appreciate that. We appreciate that for real. You know, oh, yeah. uh, Rick, what's what's up with you? I didn't I didn't see a cup. 
<laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Coach. Oh not no, not, not. <laughs> Rick. Where where did you pull that from? You pull it down from deep, deep from three, <laughs> because it's this tournament time. You have to you have to be ready. You have to want yeah, it. You gotta be ready for it. Woo. Hey. We appreciate y'all. It's gonna be the dominant story in this in the news for the next two or three weeks, men and women's tournament. And if you're not a basketball fan, it's gonna be rough on you. Stay with the latest from Insights. Visit our website at insights.com. Two eyes in the middle. I N S I I G H D S. Insights is a copyright of Mac4 Enterprises, a Florida corporation. This broadcast is produced under the exclusive ownership of Mac4 Enterprises and is the intellectual property and trademark of Mac4 Enterprises. Comments of the hosts and other individual speakers on Insights represent the independent thoughts and representation. Download Insights on your mobile apps. Take it with you wherever you go. As you see it, even the live shows are on here. Hey, everybody, it's March Madness. It's that time of year. Basketball fans, it's what we love. Rick, what you got to say to him? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Peace to all.